Hi, I'm Nikita. I work at ARGC on the admin team and I'm here today to talk about um, donor conception and my own journey. I was quite young, um, as young as I can remember, about three years old. My mum explained that I was a special baby conceived in London and that she used to travel there with my gran to become pregnant with me. I didn't feel any different to anybody else. Um, I was just happy uh, being raised by a single mum. It kind of hit me more that it was a different scenario. People at school made me realise that my conception was different. Um, so they would ask me uh, where my dad was and I'd say that I didn't have a dad and they would respond with everybody has a dad. So it was quite frustrating to um, not really understand myself and feel that they had a lack of understanding of different families. As I got older, uh, people would start to ask about my appearance and say that I didn't look like my mum and would question my ethnicity and that's when my curiosity started to grow and I started to question where my appearance comes from as well as interests that I share with family. When I was about 16 years old I applied to the HFEA um, for non-identifying information on the donor so the paperwork was originally given to my mum but it was misplaced so I contacted them and received two sheets of information, one that was the donor information and one was on siblings. The information on the donor had his general characteristics so like eye colour, hair colour, um, ethnicity, occupation, interests um, and had a personal statement that isn't guaranteed to be written by him but it's probably my favourite bit of information because it feels most personal um, because it could have been written by him and it's more of an insight into the type of person he is and it was written obviously for my mum and me to learn like what personality he would have. With the information on my donor siblings, um, it said I had 12 donor conceived siblings, um, six boys and six girls, born just after me from 1998 to 2003. So I realised that we were all quite close in age, which was nice. At the time, I was quite happy with the information I had, um, but after receiving that it kind of wanted me to find out a bit more so about two years later when I was 18 I DNA tested with Ancestry um, and the closest relative I found on there was a third cousin on the donor side that was from Cuba so that kind of uh, took me on quite a big journey um, I contacted him um, he sent me his family tree and then I um, was put in contact with genealogists in Cuba um, who helped me like build family trees to help me get records from um, other countries. Two years later I DNA tested with 23andMe so another site similar to Ancestry um, and again the closest relative I found was a third cousin a different one who was also from Cuba and that was like the closest bit of information I had at the time Around two years after that, a half-sibling match came up that was my half-sister who was also donor conceived and had been raised by two um, mums, so same-sex couple, and she also had a younger brother who was conceived using the same donor, so I'd happened to find two of my 12 siblings. Initially I didn't want to um, say too much about being donor conceived because there's always the worry that they might not have been told, so I didn't want to be the one to tell them just in case their parents hadn't discussed it so she um, messaged me first saying that she could see we were related um, and I told her that I was donor conceived um, but I suggested first that she speaks to her parents just in case she didn't know. We got speaking and it turned out that she was also from Birmingham so she was studying in the same city as me for the last three years um, and her boyfriend and a few of her friends were um, at the same university as me, one of them was on my university course so it kind of made us realise that it's quite a small world and that we could also maybe find the others um, possibly without knowing and like, come across them in day to day life. When I started to um, 
realised that it's one something I wanted to look into, so either finding my donor or siblings. After having the information from the HFEA and DNA testing, I did a university project. So I studied fine art and my final project was called Finding My Dad in 30 Days Can Art Practices and Creative Thinking Assist Somebody in Finding Their Biological Family? So I read a dissertation and made artworks um, whilst conducting my own search. So there was a few things I did that were inspired by artists. Uh, one of them was Adrian Piper who made these calling cards um, to give out to the public so I made these cards that linked to a Facebook page um, that basically had a post that explained my story of trying to find my donor and people could then go to the page and share my post and give their thoughts on it so it was a way of kind of conducting my own search um, but also making people aware and educating them on donor conception. Discovering that I was half Spanish with Cuban ancestry um, definitely was quite a shock but it's something that I was keen to explore so learn about a culture that I didn't really know about um, and then that kind of made me uh, feel more complete in terms of identity. Um, it definitely like wasn't so much of a question mark knowing that bit of information. It's also shaped me in terms of career choice so obviously now here at ARGC um, the main reason I applied for the job was being donor conceived and wanting to be a part of the journey um, with our patients and answer any questions they might have on donor conception and kind of give my view um, as a voice for like their unborn child so that they might know questions they might have further down the line um, so I can support them in that way. I actually have polycystic ovaries and maybe endometriosis um, so my own fertility is something I think of quite a lot um, and I would consider egg donation if that was something suggested to me further down the line. It's not really something I've discussed with my partner so I think it should be obviously a joint decision. If I was to use an egg donor I would either use a known donor or an open ID donor. Um, I wouldn't use an anonymous donor just because being donor conceived myself I know that it can be quite a struggle um, not knowing one biological parent's identity so I'd definitely opt for um, a known or open ID. If myself and my partner both had fertility issues then I would look into adoption. When you disclose to your child that they were conceived um, using donor gametes. It can be quite difficult knowing what you refer to them as, so whether that should be like dad or mum or bio parent, biological parent. Um, I think it's best to use quite a range with the child so that they can choose themselves what they want to refer to them as. So whether that's donor, whether they see them as their donor or whether they see them as your donor, so you were the person that chose them. Myself, I would refer to um, my donor as my own donor as well as my mum's, um, but also biological father, so I see it as kind of a scientific um, view as well that technically that's what they are, but I'd say it's best to use a range so they can decide. I think quite a lot of research has been done to show that a lot of donor conceived people um, have a more kind of positive experience from being told earlier on rather than later. So there are quite a lot of um, sites I'd recommend going to to look at this information. So there's a website called We Are Donor Conceived um, and they do a survey every year. So questions like that about being asked at an early age or if they found out later on in life, um, they have quite a lot of statistics on their website based on the survey. Um, they also have a magazine which is quite useful to read uh, for parents and donor conceived people. There's also a few Facebook groups as well. So We Are Donor Conceived also have a Facebook group which is for the um, donor conceived children and adults only. But there's also a few others. So the main Facebook group is donor conceived uh, people, parents and donors. So there people share their um, 
experiences with each other and I think it's quite a good reference to use. There are quite a lot of children's books out there um, that are illustrated um, to demonstrate different families, so single parents or same-sex parents, um, to explain it to their children that their family might be different um, and explain donor conception to them in a way that they can understand. Depending on what donor you chose, so obviously now in the UK you can use an open ID donor, so um, when the child reaches 18 they can receive identifying information so I think if that was the option you went down then definitely let your children know from early age so that they've got that option to reach out to the donor if they wanted to when they were 18. Um, people who were conceived at the same time as me um, I'd say they could DNA test from quite early or for expecting parents um, they could DNA test their children again from quite young um, and maybe do research on their behalf so that when they get to an age where they start asking questions there's already the information there that they can share with them. People that find out further down the line it's obviously um, quite a shock but I'd say that they should take as much time as they need to process their emotions and not go um, making like rash, rash decisions um, or feel any hate towards their parents they should um, sit down with them talk to them and go through it with them properly um, maybe ask them why they decided to not tell them until later on um, but I think once you've processed the information um, you can then go to the Facebook groups and you'll see that other people are also in the same scenario so at first it would probably feel quite daunting and like you're the only person that's experiencing this but as you'll see from a lot of the support groups people are quite open and give advice and it is quite a shared shared experience with other people.